Now for question number three from the sample assessment paper, um, Pure Mathematics 4, P4, International A-Level. A question here about partial fractions. First, so part A is about partial fractions. It says, find the value of the constants A, B, and C. Okay, when this fraction is split up into separate parts. Okay, so um, they kindly gave us the form in which it's going to be split up. Sometimes they might not do that. They might ask you to say, for example, the question might be straight away, integrate this. Okay, the question might come up straight away, say, integrate this with respect to x, and then you'd have to figure out, oh, we've got to split it up into partial fractions, and they split up into, um, you know, a over x, and then because you have a repeated fa factor, it will be like b over 3x minus 1, and then c over 3x minus 1 squared. And there's a repeated factor, it's kind of repeated once without the square, and once uh, with the square. But here they kindly gave us the form in which it's going to be split up, and then the second part, I think they ask us to integrate it. So anyway, when you want to simplify, or when you want to split up this fraction like this, um, what we do is we set up an identity. So in order to do that, we basically multiply both sides of this identity by x times 3x minus 1 squared, by the LCM of the denominators, which is x times 3x minus 1 squared. Now, when I multiply this side by x times 3x minus 1 squared, they, the whole thing cancels out, and you're left with 1. Okay, if I multiply this, this fraction by that, okay, they'll cancel out. And if I multiply a over x by x times 3x minus 1 squared, the x part cancels out, and you're left with a times 3x minus 1 squared. And if I multiply b over 3x minus 1 by x times 3x minus 1 squared, you'll, you'll be left with one of the 3x minus 1s and one of the x's. So you've got plus b times x, 3x minus 1. And when I multiply the, this term by x times 3x minus 1 squared, the 3x minus 1 squared cancel out, leaving you with just x. So now our objective is to find the values of a, b, and c from this. And we can do this in numerous ways. One of the ways we can use an easy way is to, say, substitute x equals 0 into the equation, into the identity, in which case the b and the c term will cancel out, because you know, that will be 0 times whatever this is, and 0 times c, they cancel out, become 0. And you're left with just the a term. So you have 1 equals a times, now if this becomes 0, you have 3 times 0, which is 0, minus 1 squared. So a is basically going to be 1, because minus 1 squared is 1, so a is equal to 1. So know that a is equal to 1 now. And if I substitute x equals uh, 1 third into both of these, uh, into this uh, whole equation, then this, this will become 0, because 1 third times 3 is uh, 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and so well, this becomes 0. And you're left with just a c term. So on this side, you're left with 1. And on this side, you're left with 0 plus 0 plus a third c. Okay, in which case, c is equal to 3. Okay, so we found a and, a and c. Now, to find b, we can't use the same technique because substituting 0 gave this, got rid of this b term. Substituting 1 third also got rid of this b term. And there's nothing else for us to substitute which will help us to leave b on its own. Okay, so what we have to do now is we have to think of another way. So let's compare the coefficients um, of the terms. For example, we could compare the coefficients of x squareds. Compare the x squareds on both sides. Now, of course, on the left side, there's no x squared terms. And on the right side, if you square uh, this bracket and multiply by a, you're going to have 9x squared a. The x term, x squared term will be 9x squared. So we have 9 times a x squared. So that means the x squared term will be 9a from that term. And if we expand this bracket, you're going to have bx times 3x, which is 3bx squared. So plus 3b is the x squared term from this term. And there's no x squared term from the c. So we're left with this equation. And we know already that a equals 1. So we can replace the a with 1. So we're left with um, whoops, 9a plus 3b is equal to 0. Therefore, you've got 3b is equal to minus 9, so b is equal to negative 3. So we have a, b, and c. We found them. So now we can say that our, our function f of x is equal to a, which is 1, over x, plus b, which is minus 3. So we can put minus 3. Uh, minus 3 over, let me write it more neatly than that. 3 over 3x minus 1. So you have minus 
3 over 3x minus 1 and you've got c which is plus 3 over 3x minus 1 squared. So there is our function that says find the values of the constant a, b and c. So we've done that. That's a and that's b and that's c. Okay, we didn't really have to write this down but that helps us for the next part. It says hence find um, the integral of f of x and then find the integral with these limits. So we've got to take what we found here and we've got to integrate it for part b. So we've got to integrate our uh, function. So we've got the integral of, we've got 1 over x minus 3 over x, 3x minus 1, sorry, plus, I'll write this in this form because this can be integrated because it's a power of negative 2. All right, so you're going to have to find what the integral of f of x is equal to first. So this is part one we're doing. Okay, so to integrate this now, remember when you have one over x, you can't integrate it in the normal way because you'll have, if you put x to the power of minus one, add one to the power gives you x to the power of zero, divided by zero, it's like undefined. But we learned that the integral of one over x will be given by lin of x. So this is going to be the lin of the modulus of x, okay, because it, it cannot be negative. So as long as it's positive, um, this is what keeps it always positive. And again, this is like a similar situation. It's called the reverse of the chain rule. So what I'm going to do is I'll put minus 3 times the lin of the modulus of 3x minus 1. Okay, but because of, because of the, the chain rule, you have to then divide it by the differential of what's inside the function, which is the 3. If you differentiate 3x minus 1, you get 3. And that causes the 3 in here and there to cancel out. And for the next one, you can do it in the, uh, the way that we... We know because outside the function is the differential of what's inside the function. You've got f dash of x times f of x. So this is another reverse of the chain rule. Okay, when you have this situation where outside the function is something which is of the form of the differential of what's inside the function. If I differentiate 3x, I get a constant. And there's a constant. So I'm going to put 3 times 3x minus 1. Then I add, add 1 to the power, so it becomes the power of minus 1. Then I divide by the new power. Uh, also divide by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 3. Okay, and you'll notice that 3 cancels with that 3, and you got your plus C, of course. So this is the lin of the modulus of x minus, and this gives you the lin of uh, the modulus of 3x minus 1, and here you'll end up with minus 1 over 3x minus 1 plus C. Okay, and um, it says hence, okay, that's fine for the answer there, but I'm going to, I think that should be fine for your answer, but I'm going to just combine these lins together. This is like the modulus of x over 3x minus 1, minus 1 over 3x minus 1, and plus c. Okay, so that's part 1, and now part 2 tells us to put the limits in of 1 and 2. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put the limits of 1 and 2 in here. Of course, I don't need to right now write, I do not need to write the, the, uh, the plus C now. Okay, I don't need to write the plus C because um, we have these limits. Now the C, is, the C will cancel out and I, if I, you know, because I've got to subtract so they'll have C minus C. So now I'm going to put the value of 2 and 1 in here and see what comes out. It says give your answer in a particular form. A plus lin B, where A and B are constants. Okay, so now I've got to find the value of A and B. Um, um, I've got to put in the form lin A plus B. Lin A plus B. A plus lin B, sorry. A plus lin B. Okay, so now I'm going to put 2 into here first. So I'll have 2 lin, I'll have lin, sorry, of 2 over 2 divided by um, 3 times 2 is 6, minus 1 is 5. Lin 2 fifths minus 1 over that's going to be um, 5, all right, because 2 into there gives you 5. And then minus, then I'll have the lin, okay, of, if I put 1 into there, I'll have 1 over um, 3 minus 1, which is 2, okay, so a lin of a half minus a half. Okay, now let me uh, go on to the next page, because I'm running out of space here. Okay, so um, now we're going to continue on this page. Uh, we have here, there we are, sorry. Yeah, so this is as far as we got. 
So we have the lin of 2 over 5 minus 1 fifth minus the lin of a half minus a half. So now we have to basically uh, simplify this. So we have the lin of 2 over 5 uh, minus the lin of a half. I'll just write the lins together. It'll be a bit neater than that. Okay, the lin of a half. Whoops. Whoa, what's going on there? One second. The lin of a half. Sorry about that. Okay, and then you're going to have minus one fifth and minus minus a half, which is plus a half. Okay, now if I combine these together, I have the lin of, this is like two fifths divided by a half. Okay, that's like two fifths divided by a half because you minus here. And you're going to have minus, you're going to have um, basically it's plus a half minus a fifth, so a half. Um, if you change these to the same denominator, this is like a half is like 5 over 10 minus 2 over 10. A fifth is 2 tenths, right? Just so we can combine them together. So this is like the lin of, you've got 2 fifths times 2 over 1. 2 fifths times 2 over 1. And plus, and you've got 5 minus 2, which is 3 over 10. Okay, so the, the, we'll get, you'll end up with the lin of four fifths, the lin of four fifths plus three over ten. All right, let's see what the question said. Back, it says here in the form a plus lin b, where a and b are constants. Okay, a plus lin b, where a and b are constants, and we can say that this is lin a plus well three over ten plus lin b. So three over ten plus lin of four-fifths, where a and b are constants. So a is three-tenths and b is four-fifths. It doesn't say we should find the value, just write it in this form. So we don't have to write a equals and b equals, but that's the answer to that question here. Three-tenths plus lin four-fifths. And there is the end of question number three.